So we be na say we will honor. The bill will be can be a beer or meeting as be a better. Oba frau, obey so, maybe a yea. Oh, yea, Macrano be a bana, oh, yea, omen, omette. But and run time by crossing off. Why you see? Uh, then but there was something. Then And run with a friend, say, Hano. Missing me for a month, I'm a month. I'm not good in India. They got that, I know. Hello, you're not going to meet me at the end of the world. And run orientation. Let me come, Madame, for your company. I may call it on about that. Oh, I don't know. Me 
Um, sorry, I was trying to still uh, sort out the comments in there. Those of you typing in the chat box, um, somebody is responding to you. Sorry, I couldn't get to read all of them. Right. So like I was saying, uh, the dean of the graduate school will soon be talking to us so we understand how things work here. It's very, very important. So you don't go to the wrong offices asking for some information that you cannot get from that office. So you will get to know the rules, the regulations, the structures and the processes in this uh, premier university. So without wasting much time, I would just like to call on the dean, the dean of the graduate school of the University of Ghana, Professor Robert Osei to address us. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abo, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so as Dr. Abo said, I am Robert Osei, and I am the Dean of the School of Graduate Studies. And I'm going to just share with you this evening some of the main things that we find as quite problematic, particularly in relation to your stay here at um, the University of Ghana as graduate students. So if you would not mind, let me just share the slides that I have so that I can speak to the slides. So just a minute. Yep. Great. So. I am going to assume that, as uh, you could hear Dr. Albo, everyone can hear me, okay? And hopefully you can also see um, the screen that I'm sharing, okay. All right, so I will essentially be start with some introductory remarks and then I will speak to um, very important issues and issues that we find somehow our graduate students tend to either ignore or do not pay much attention to um, during their stay here and if you will pay attention not only to uh, the talk today, but also 
um, pay attention to the regulations that govern uh, graduate studies here at UG, your life will be a lot, lot simpler um, for you, not for, not for us, for you particularly. Of course, if your life is simpler during your stay here, it makes our life also a lot easier. Okay, so I will speak to uh, issues relating to regulations. I'll talk a little bit about the program structure, but particularly that which relates to the sandwich program. I'll talk about an issue which uh, we all somehow um, or most of us find ourselves um, requiring um, these uh, things like the deferment, extensions, and the readmissions. And I'll speak to the issue of plagiarism, which we take very, very seriously here at UG, and essentially try and then um, guide you as to what we mean by plagiarism and give you some pointers as to how and what you need to do to understand it properly um, so that you avoid it at all costs. Now, the School of Graduate Studies, um, for those of you who um, do not know where the School of Graduate Studies is, uh, we are located not too far from the uh, University of Ghana Business School um, and indeed we are adjacent to the School of Nursing if you know where Nursing is. And our responsibilities um, can be classified under six main areas. The first of course involves the process that got you here, i.e. the admissions and of course also included in what we need to do is uh, the registration, we support the registration and also the orientation of uh, our graduate students so that they know where to find what and at what time. Okay, so uh, let me also put this up front. This talk I am having with you it's not about telling you all that there is in the regulations. It's rather just to highlight some of the key things relating to the regulations. What that means is that it is not a substitute for the need to read the regulations. Okay, and I will point to you where you can actually find electronic copies so that you can make reference to it anytime you have questions that you need answers to. Okay, so you don't always need to come to the School of Graduate Studies to ask us questions or you don't always need to uh, send us emails to have your issues addressed. Ultimately, if you send us questions, we will refer to the same handbook and then respond to your questions. So please take note, okay? So, we deal with admissions, uh, we deal with the approval of graduate programs uh, for all graduate programs that are mounted at the University of Ghana. Um, once the academic units conceive of the programs, um, it goes through the college and then also comes to the um, School of Graduate Studies where we then um, subjects the program to the requirements as pertaining to uh, graduate uh, studies here at the UG. So admissions, whether people meet the admission requirements, uh, what it entails to um, go through a program and then get either an MA, an MSc, an MPhil, or a PhD. So the approval process for graduate programs, a critical part of it uh, is actually being or is done by the School of Graduate Studies. Of course, we also do approval of supervisors and examiners for the academic units. And um, we process um, theses and dissertations for examinations. 
Okay, so for those of you who will be doing dissertations, um, it will have to go through the School of Graduate Studies for um, external examination of uh, these dissertations. Those who are doing long essay, um, it doesn't necessarily go through the uh, School of Graduate Studies, rather the units, and in this case, the University of Ghana Business School will do the assessment of the long essays, but will send us the grades after it has been done. And then also we do the determination of results. Um, like I said, for each and every given program, there are some requirements that you need to meet. As, and I would go through those. So again, it's the School of Graduate Studies that will finally ensure that you've met all those requirements. And once we've satisfied ourselves that we've met the requirements for the award of the respective um, programs or degrees, then your results will then be published. And based on that, you will then qualify for graduation. So these are six broad responsibilities. Now, as I mentioned, um, there are two, if you like, in my mind, actually, even the first one is the key one uh, for um, all graduate students. That's the regulations that govern uh, graduate study. Uh, the current version, which is on our website, is, uh, was um, 2014, I believe. Um, there is another one uh, that is in the pipeline, which will be coming out soon. Uh, but the main elements of it uh, has not changed. And so please get yourselves a copy. Uh, the regulations and the handbook for the programs you can find online. Um, so for those of you who have not been to our website, uh, that's the address of the website. Of course, now we are beginning to also, um, I wouldn't say follow the crowd, but uh, do as others do and try and then uh, be active on social media. So we also have a Twitter account and uh, we hope to be uh, populating it uh, as often as possible so that we can engage with all our stakeholders. Now, the handbooks, if you go to the School of Graduate Studies website, the handbooks can be found um, on the main page. Um, if you look under the handbooks button, you click on it, and we have quite a number of documents there, and you can uh, pick any one of them, download, and it's yours. Okay, it's for free. In fact, you have already paid for it, so I would encourage you to get yourselves uh, copies, okay? But I think the important point that I want to make here is that keep these regulations close to you because they do address largely 80 to 90% of the questions that graduate students have. And here I'm saying this based on experience, okay? Of course, on the, our homepage as well, um, there are quick links that you can also find other useful information, uh, such as the uh, plagiarism policy, which I will speak to, and also the Tenetin, which is the software that is used to um, undertake our plagiarism checks. So this is where you will find your regulations and programs. Now, just to mention something about registration, it's something that somehow uh, students take it for granted. I mean, but it's so, so critical, particularly in the age that we find ourselves in, where most of the things that we do are online. Okay, and a lot of the interactions 
between the School of Graduate Studies, that is the coordinating unit for graduate programs, and the academic units is done online. And so it is critical, essential indeed, that you register each semester for the approved duration of your program. Indeed, we are engaged with the um, UGCS, which is the uh, Computing Services um, unit of the university to begin to make it even more difficult for you to do anything online if you haven't registered in the semester. And the only reason we are insisting, of course, as part of the registration, you have to pay fees, which is very important. You have an obligation, we have an obligation, and therefore um, our obligations are important, your obligations are also, also important. But that is not the only reason. The other reason is that if you do not register, then it is very difficult for the faculty members who teach you or who lecture you to actually enter your grades after you've written examinations, okay? And then if you do not, if they cannot enter the grades, then what it means is that at the end of the year, you would say that, oh, I've written all the courses and I've passed all the courses. Well, we will not take your word for it. We will check in the system where indeed there are marks that have been assigned to the courses that you took. And if, of course, if you do not register, the faculty members cannot enter your marks. And if we do not enter your marks, what it will mean is that you will not have the required credits to enable you to graduate. Okay, so please, 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 I'm pleading with you, take the registration very seriously. Like I said, you have an obligation to pay fees, and so as part of the registration process, you will pay fees. But that is not the only thing. Of, of course, if it's the fees which is a problem, you can engage with the University of Ghana Business School, you can engage with the university at large, and then we can all think of ways by which we can help each other. But it is critical that you register each semester as required. The registration by proxy is not allowed, so you cannot get somebody else to come and register for you. Um, indeed, the small paragraph that I have at the slide is essentially telling you, and it isn't from the regulations, and what it is essentially saying is that if you are involved in registration by proxy, both yourself, who are the beneficiaries, uh, or the agent, or agents, um, is, can be actually prosecuted by the university. Okay, so we take it very seriously. Also, I think one of the things that um, sometimes comes up is the fact that you find people registering for more than one program at the same time. If you have registered for a program, and it doesn't matter whether that program is being taken here at the University of Ghana or outside of the University of Ghana, please seek permission. You cannot register for more than one program at the time, at the same time. You can only do that if you have express written permission from the vice chancellor. Of course, if you want to do that, you can write through the University of Ghana Business School, through um, the School of Graduate Studies, and we will then uh, make a case to the vice chancellor um, for consideration. Okay, so make sure, again, it's not about whether we will agree to it or not, these are the regulations and therefore you need to abide by them. Now the program structure for the sandwich, uh, the sandwich programs are typically organized during the long vacation. So normally, normally they are between May and August. However, in the last two or so years when we've had the COVID, um, changing the academic uh, calendar a bit. Um, that is why we have uh, this year's 
uh, sandwich program and indeed I think last year's also ran between April and June. Uh, this year is running between April and July. Hopefully once we get back on track in terms of the academic calendar, we'll move back to the May August uh, period. But it's essentially over that period when school has uh, the uh, regular programs have uh, ended and then the sandwich kicks in. For the sandwich program, the academic year of course comprises also two semesters just like the regular programs, uh, but for each semester we have a total of eight weeks eight weeks as opposed to 17 weeks for the regular programs. Now for the eight weeks, it's eight weeks of teaching, one week of revision, one week of examination. And let me just make a point here in respect to the number of weeks that um, you do uh, the sandwich program. It's eight weeks for the normal 17 weeks. This is not to suggest in any way that the number of credits or contact hours are reduced. No. The credits are the same. What it just means is that the program is more compressed and therefore it sort of uh, requires quite a bit of extra work from not just the faculty members but also and importantly, uh, you, our key uh, stakeholders, um, students. Okay, so it's eight weeks, you have six weeks of teaching, you'd have one week of revision, and then you'd have one week of examination. Now, for all programs at UG, there are three key components. There is a coursework component, then there is a seminar component, and then there is a dissertation. So one does not replace the other of these three components, okay? One does not replace the other. So you cannot use coursework to replace, for instance, the seminars. So you cannot say that I'm taking extra coursework so that I do not have to do the seminars, or I'm taking extra coursework so I do not have to do a dissertation or long essay. Okay, so Critically, you would have to take the coursework and there are some requirements in terms of the credits that is you need to get for the coursework. You would have to take seminars depending on the um, program that you are taking. For each academic year, you are required to do one seminar and each seminar carries three credits. So, for instance, if you are in a two-year program, you do two seminars. If you are doing a PhD and it's a four-year program, you do four seminars. Okay? If you are in a one-year MA, MSc program, you will do just one seminar of three credits. Typically, you do either a dissertation for the master's programs. You do either a dissertation, a long essay, you do either project work, or um, a thesis in the case of those who are doing MPhils. But each one of these elements or subcomponents of the dissertation comes with different credits and indeed different weights in terms of the requirements for graduation. So on this slide, what I have shown is the all the different components, you find that the seminar row has it filled for everybody. So everybody has to do a seminar, whether you are doing a dissertation, a long essay, or if you are doing coursework, again, everybody does coursework. However, you can be doing either a dissertation or a long essay, or you can be doing special topics or projects. And what these mean, note that the uh, credit requirements are very different for the dissertation long essays or special topics component, which is the third component. 
So depending on the weight that we give to the components for the particular program that you are taking, it has implications for your total um, credit requirements that um, you need to take for a one-year master's program. Now, for those who are doing dissertation, you need a minimum of 12 credits per semester and a maximum of 18 credits per semester. So what it means is that because there are two semesters in every academic year, what it means is that you need a minimum of 24 credits over an academic year. Okay, a minimum of 24 credits. Now, for the seminar, as I mentioned, it's compulsory for everybody. So it's three credits because it's a one year master's program. The dissertation is 12 credits, has the biggest weight amongst the uh, dissertation longest in special topic components. It has 12 credits. And so the minimum credits there is 39 credits. However, for those who are doing dissertation, the maximum credit requirement goes up to the um, 18 per semester. So if you add it, because the dissertation has a lot more weight, if you add the credit requirements for the one year master's program, for those who are doing dissertation, you need a minimum of 39 and a maximum of 51. Okay, so for long essay, the weight of the long essay is half of that of the dissertation. And so the requirements in total is between 39 and 45. Same thing for the non-dissertation or the long essay option. Sorry, that is the non-dissertation, non-long essay option. Uh, the way I've put it, it may look as if it's a long essay option, no. So it's non-dissertation, non-longer say option. Okay, now, so you need to meet these requirements to be able to, or to be considered for um, the award the degree. However, that is not the only thing that you need to meet. Also in the coursework, there are core courses and there are electives or there are core courses, the required courses, and then electives. Now, for the core courses and the required courses, you need to pass all of these courses. Okay, you cannot say that you are going to substitute an elective for uh, a core course. No. So when we are assessing your uh, results at the end of the year to recommend you for the award of the degree, we are not just looking at whether you meet the minimum requirements of the 24 credits. We are also looking at whether you have a seminar which you've passed and whether you've passed the dissertation. Seminars and dissertation as well, the pass mark is not the same as the coursework. Whilst for coursework, the pass mark is 50. For seminars, dissertations, the pass mark is 60. Okay, so again, there are some nuances even in respect of the credits that you find uh, on this uh, slide. So we say 39 to 51 credits if you are doing dissertation, but it has its own nuances. Okay, of course, we can always uh, take questions after. All right, so the coursework is again it's examined um, the dissertation is to be examined by one external and one internal examiner for the long essay or special topics it's just the internal uh, examiner who examines it okay now in every academic unit uh, the business school included there is a graduate studies committee that has been set up that 
is available to advise students on the selection of courses, on the reflections associated with the research topics, uh, on the supervisors that will um, be appropriate depending on your area of interest in terms of your research work, and they are supposed to be sending progress reports on students each semester. In terms of the um, dissertations and uh, long essays um, for the supervisory committee, typically it's one or two members um, for the MA, MSc programs. Uh, for MPhil, usually it's about two. For PhDs, um, typically it's about three. Okay. Now, let me also just mention something which came to mind and which we are having to deal with, uh, unfortunately, more frequently than we would want to relating to the supervisors, particularly for those who are doing dissertations. We will not accept your dissertation if it has not been signed by at least one of the supervisors. Indeed, if all supervisors have not signed, we may consider it if they have written letters as to why they are not signing, and we will consider the um, the reasons why they are not signing and then make a decision as to whether we will then let it go for examination or not. And we are doing this because we want to avoid a situation where a student thinks they can come to Eugene, write anything without supervision and then submit it for examination. No, that will not happen. Okay. Okay, so for the interruption of study programs, um, you cannot do it for more than two continuous semesters, otherwise you lose your studentship. Um, it's only permissible on health grounds if supported by medical reports. Um, of course, ideally it has to be ex ante, but we also do appreciate that for health reasons it could be exposed. Increasingly, we also do get quite a number of um, requests for interruption of studies based on um, uh, financial reasonings, reasons, okay? And we certainly uh, do consider those as well. But in all cases, you've got to try and then get written permission from the School of Graduate Studies, okay? What that means is that you need to apply to the School of Graduate Studies through the University of Ghana Business School, and then we'll consider the case, and then we will grant if we deem it as reasonable, we'll grant the request, okay? Normally, from what I've seen, we will normally grant many of these, but we do not always grant the requests, okay? And also in the case of the health reasons, particularly even for the ex ante, but particularly for the ex post, we will always give it to the, um, the health services unit of the university uh, to look at uh, before and advice, of course, before um, we consider. Now, so for a one-year program, you normally have two semesters within which to complete your program. If within the two semesters or over the two semesters, you haven't completed the program or you feel you are not able to complete the program, you can apply for an extension of your studentship. You would apply for an extension of your studentship. And again, same procedure, you apply through the 
um, your department and then it comes to the school of graduate studies we take your file look at your file and then we will grant or not for one year programs you only qualify indeed for non thesis programs you only qualify for one semester um, extension now note that Typically, if you haven't finished, you still haven't finished within the extension period and you need more time, we'll again consider readmission. Again, for a one-year program, it's typically one semester. And uh, again, the process is you write, the department will attach a letter, they send to the School of Graduate Studies, and we also consider same so you will do that if you haven't completed your program during the extension period however we note that as well as as always students are very smart so sometimes what they then do is that they don't apply for the extension and um, after when they are getting close to the when the extension period ends, then they apply for readmission. They apply for the extension, right? Unfortunately, the extension period is contiguous to the normal period of study. And it is typically assumed that even if you haven't applied and you haven't finished, we assume that you have taken the extension. So you cannot avoid and of course if you take extension we'll charge you a little bit for that so you cannot avoid the extension by just uh, um, deciding that you wouldn't uh, register and then you wait till when the extension is aspiring and then just pay for readmission and then you can get your way out of it so all these processes are inbuilt into the ITS system and so Without even the business school or the graduate school telling the student accounts, they know it and therefore will trigger. It's particularly when um, we are actually preparing for graduation. And so you find that when we are actually doing our examinations board meetings, looking at your results prior to the graduation, student accounts will say, we've tagged this account because they exceeded their normal studentship and therefore they need to pay before they'll be considered okay so again let us just do the right turn let us work hard and then try and finish the program within one year and we can all avoid all these problems okay so where you have actually um, failed some courses or where your studentship has lapsed you can apply for readmission. And typically, your studentship lapses if you finish the one year, you haven't applied for an extension, or after the extension period, you've not finished, or indeed, you haven't, you failed some of your core courses or your dissertation, and therefore, um, you apply for readmission. Typically, for the readmission that is apply within a certain period of when you've actually finished your last paper uh, we assume that the courseware components will be waived for readmission you only have one opportunity unless maybe two decades within two decades decades uh, the university decides to grant amnesty readmission under amnesty and therefore it says that okay between this period say 2010 and 20 and current period those who were students but couldn't finish for one reason or the other can apply for readmission under amnesty and then the university uh, will grant it okay but i know that all of us gathered here today want to have this thing completed in one year and will be home and dry so finally um, the issue about plagiarism 
plagiarism in academic life is very, very serious. Very serious, must be avoided. People think that it's only important in uh, when you are writing your thesis or dissertation, no. Uh, usually because we graduate school for any thesis or dissertation that is going out for examination, we require that your work should have passed the plagiarism tests. However, for your course assignments as well, it is required that you avoid plagiarism. And indeed, even in your course assignment, if a lecturer has cause to believe that you have plagiarized, um, the penalty will still hold, as in the case of the dissertation or thesis. Eugene uses a program or software called the Tenetine, which is used to check for plagiarism before submitting. As I mentioned, for all theses and dissertations for which the um, School of Graduate Studies coordinates their examination, they must be accompanied by a plagiarism report before we will accept the thesis or dissertation. Now, for the plagiarism uh, benchmarks or thresholds that Eugene uses, overall similarity index, so they run your thesis or dissertation through the Tenetine software, and if it comes up that it is less than 20%, then you are halfway through in terms of passing the plagiarism tests. However, that is not the only condition. The other requirement is that your single source similarity index should not exceed 2%. In other words, if there is some um, similarity index associated with the, uh, your dissertation and a particular work that you found in the literature, it shouldn't exceed 2%. Also, the acceptable number of words in an unbroken string should not exceed 10 words. Okay, the Tinyteen software does all this for you. So once you run it through, it picks all these and then presents you with a report. And that report will have to be submitted to the School of Graduate Studies as part of the things that you require to submit for your thesis or dissertation. So all of the three requirements need to be passed. Okay, you need to tick all the three boxes before um, you say that you've passed the plagiarism tests. Now, if you remember the first couple of slides that I showed, um, under the quick links, you would find the plagiarism policy there on the School of Graduate Studies website. You would find the tiny team software and how you can use it also there. And they are not very big documents. So you can actually spend a, a, an evening just reading these so that you familiarize yourself with it. So on that note, I would once again want to say welcome to the University of Ghana and I wish you the very best of stays here on campus. And please, at any time, if you have an issue or you just want to say hi, you may drop by the School of Graduate Studies and do so. Or of course, you can always send us an email. Thank you very much. I guess I would have to wait and then take a few questions before, or it was as clear as mud. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Um, I think the presentation was very elaborate. I do not see that many questions coming up, but I think we'll do that after uh, Mr. Fokusa Kodia is done with. The, the session for the UGBS information, giving out the information for UGBS. 
uh, after that, then we'll take all the questions together, I think. Yes. All right. OK, thank you once again. So ladies and gentlemen, um, let me just move on to uh, Mr. Pokusa Kodia, who is the uh, school administrator for the University of Ghana Business School. He, you are, you've heard a lot about the general university. So now let's bring it home. He will talk to us about how things work in the business school. So I, I do not see that to take that much of your time. We will soon be done and then you can ask all your questions. Thank you. Mr. Sakodi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to University of Ghana and to University of Ghana Business School. Uh, I am Imanuel Pokusakodie, as the MC told you, and I'm the school administrator. Here to talk to you about our facilities and some general issues. Yeah, we, I can assure you that you don't made any mistake by choosing a business school and that you will have a rewarding time with us. You will enjoy your stay here, I can assure you. We are blessed with very competent lecturers, professors, senior lecturers who, who avail themselves for you anytime. And I want you to always clarify issues with them if you are having problems. We also have very experienced administrators who will be there to answer your questions when they need be. The magnificent building you see over there is where you'll be having your lectures. I, 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 I think, as I'm sure some of you may know this building and may know your way around here. Uh, for the benefit of those who are now coming, I would explain most of the things that you, and some of the general issues that you should know about our school. On the floor of is the ICT lounge. The ICT lounge has been stocked with very, stocked with modern computers, that you can use anytime you want. The place is open. You may have to just identify yourself. Very soon you'll be giving your ID cards. And even before that, before you start using your ID cards, may be required to identify yourself, just mention your name and your PIN number will assess the situation and then we can tell you So bear with me, I will. I'll rectify that and come back to you. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me see whether it's changing. No, it's not changing. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, on the ground floor, we have the ICT launch fully refurbished quite recently. And that's where you be, you can bring your laptops. They have computers there already. But if you don't, if you don't have laptops, you can always go there, use the computers for whatever need you, you'll find yourself. And then you would be you required to identify yourself before you do. and I pray you try and then cooperate with the staff over there because they'll be doing that for your own benefit. Um, when you receive your ID cards, you use your ID cards everywhere on campus. We have facilities, but unfortunately, some students from UPSA and then um, Jimpa try and come and use our facilities, and that creates problem for us. So for your own, we require you to have your ID cards wherever you go. So you turn at them, and you'll be allowed entry everywhere you want to go. We have e trees on the ground floor, east wing and west wing. And that's where you have access to food. Of course, the food is for sale. So you prepare yourself, buy food in between breaks, and then you go and eat there. You are not required to bring food to the premises. So please patronize the eateries so that we will all have a fruitful program. There is also a baby room on the ground floor Room OW3. Yes, for those of you nursing mothers, who, who would want to bring your babies? So you come with your nannies and your babies, and you leave your nannies at a baby room. There is an experienced lady there who will take care of them. And in between lectures, you can come and breastfeed and go. At the end of the day, every record is taken and you can be sure your baby and your nanny will be safe. On the first floor, we have a faculty lounge. First floor, faculty lounge. And that's where the lecturers relax when they finish their lectures. You can meet them there, have discussions where necessary. As I've said, try and interact with your lecturers as much as possible so you understand everything that you are taught. The EMBA office is also on the first floor. And that's where some of our admin staff are. Faculty offices, first, second, and third floors. So we have some of the faculty members in, on that building. And if you need them, you can enter their offices politely and talk to them. There's also the graduate office on the second floor. And that is where most of our admin program, uh, officers are, and they are also there to help you. Excuse me, my slides are not changing. Okay. Okay, so there is also the international relations, international relations office, which is on the second floor. And this office is in charge of uh, study tours, all international activities and partnership. We have the library on the second, third, and fourth floors. And also we have classrooms on at both ends, east and west wings for each floor. We have washroom all over. You can use the washrooms anytime you want to use the, the washrooms. And there's a facility officer in charge of uh, the place. If you have issues, you can contact them. So they help you. We also have the PAD launch on the fourth floor. Then the business center, also on the fourth, fourth floor where you can uh, make photocopies or any other business activities that you wish to. We have some relationship or collaboration with ACC and they have their room on the fourth floor. 
again, there are staircases on both ways. So you can use you can use both staircases if you wish. Alternatively, you can there there, there is there are two lifts, and that the lift takes an average of ten persons each. So you can be using the lifts. There's also a generating plant. One zero three zero kV is for your convenience. So you can always when there is a light off, we switch them on. So academic work will go on. And you have Wi-Fi facility all over. I mentioned earlier that there's a facility officer who is there. So all complaints about some facilities, you can tell them to her. Her name is Miss Edna Ameya. Then there's a one-year program office. This office is in charge of your records, correspondence, operational matters, or everything relating to your academic work. So you go in there almost every now and then, and we'll let you have your telephone numbers. If they need be, you call them. You may not necessarily drive, but if you are around, you can always enter these offices for all your problems to be addressed. And in that office, we have Madam Abna Pokyo Chiankra, Jeffrey Makusato, and Tyros Tegu. Tara Tegu, sorry. Then now a few housekeeping rules. These are very important, and I, 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 I'll be glad if you adhere to them. You do not eat in the classrooms, the ICT lounge, and the library. We also don't allow you to have parties in the classrooms. Once you start eating there, you invite students there. Once students come there, they invite snakes. So we don't want you to uh, eat in the classrooms. And I, I hope you would uh, accept and abide by these rules. They are very important. Again, we don't want to enter the classrooms. The ICC is in the library and the surroundings. We have provided that beings and we expect you to use them. Sometimes some people can place their legs on the walls and dirty the walls when they are relaxed. Uh, we don't accept that, so please do not do that. Again, we expect you to leave the washrooms the way you made them so that when you visit them the next time, you will see them neat. So we don't, we expect you to uh, maintain some cleanliness there. We try not to clog the WCs. If it happens, please invite the contract cleaners immediately. They normally sit by the entrance. So when you invite them and you let them know that there's a problem, they will help you solve it. In case you want to use any of our facilities for any event, you are free to do that, but you have to give one week advance notice to the facility officer. You also have a website now that everything is online. The UG website and UGBS website are very key. So I will encourage you to be visiting the website regularly. Again, you already know your PIN, your ID number, and your password. So you need to generate an email address from your admission letter that has been provided for you. You are also required to um, form platforms. And then you, you will let class reps who will help us share information with you. You need WhatsApp platforms in your various groups. And so if you want to share, share information with you, it will be easier. As a school administrator, my official email address is sadminugbs at ug.edu.gh. So you can send messages through that. But the office email for the one year program is ugbs sandwich at ug.edu.gh. And that's what you should be using often because you are sandwich students. Then the telephone number is 0303 slash 0303. 964338. Now about fees. All our fees are quoted in cities, cities, especially for local students. 
that for international students, they are in dollars. The fee for a semester is 8,410 for the Ghanaian students, and then 3,700 for international students. You are required to pay at DCB Bank into a, a UGB special fee collection account. And this is very important. Don't make payment to the main university account because that would make it difficult for us to uh, register you. And as the Dean of Graduate Studies said, if you are unable to register, it means you will not be able to write exams. Yes, you are ordinarily, uh, largely you are required to pay the required fees, full payment for the semester. But there is some pay payment flexibility and you need to negotiate that. It is not open to everyone. You negotiate on account of your peculiar problem. And if it merits some flexibility, we grant you that flexibility. As you have been told already, you cannot register without paying fees. And if you are not able to pay fees, you cannot participate in class. Yes, so you, you, your entry into examinations are fully dependent upon payment of your fees. It is also your responsibility to regularly check your account so that if there are problems with your account, you let us know. We, we will know, uh, 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 what do you call it, accept any excuse that I didn't know, I didn't check my account. No, please regularly check and let uh, the UGB, UGBS accountant know if you have a problem, so that problem will be rectified. And you are also supposed to keep all your receipts and documents, so anytime you want to inspect them, you can give them out for inspection. Now, fees. The Dean of Graduate Studies told you that uh, some extensions and some readmissions attract fees. So, longer say extension, you pay 2,313 cities to the UGB, UGBS cash office. Um, we can arrange alternative payments uh, by the bank, but that will be complicate, complicated to you later. And then, Deadline for submission of long essay is one month before the final examination. Strictly one month before the final examination because your supervisors would have to go through the long essays and corrections will have to be made here and there. So please take it serious. Receipt fee per failed course for students who should have completed is 1,157. Then receipt fees per failed course for continuing students is 222. In all these cases, I expect you to consult the program office for clarification and for procedures you have to go through. We have what we call the international study tours. This is normally organized, I think, uh, every year, one in January and the other around March. In the coming year, we will start. We, we, because of COVID, we expose you to global competence, competencies development to help you enhance your skill and learning, and also to broaden your horizon as a business student. So you will net network with people outside uh, your area. You go to, let's say, US, Yale University, Georgia, and interact with students there. You go to some factories, interact. You know their business and the way they handle their business, their cultures and everything. It's there to help you know what goes on globally. So we are not just there to teach you what is in Ghana, that we expose you to the international world. For detailed information, please contact our office on the second floor. That's the International Relations Office. And these email addresses are 
still vibrant and you can use them. You can send your mails to these addresses, irugbs at ug.edu.gh or ybanier at ug.edu.gh. And the telephone numbers are 0204 sorry, 0303 The estimated cost in January 2018, that's about um, three years ago, was it four years? Yes. Uh, but 2019 was 7,000 thereabouts. So if you want to plan towards it, then you know the estimated cost. Um, it may be a little higher now. I, don't, I cannot tell, but Professor Godin Abekan Kruma is a coordinator and he will work with his team for them to uh, give you the exact figure for the coming year. Now, security and parking. We have security men and women all over, and we expect you to cooperate with them for your own good. Because, you know, we are surrounded by bushes uh, and if you abide by or you obey the rules, then you'll be safe. We don't expect you to use, leave your valuables in your cars, laptops, phone, bags, etc. We invite you. So please make sure you take them out. And as you already know, we will not be responsible for any theft of items left in your, your cars. So please make sure you abide by this instruction and you obey the instructions of the security men. And I want to advise you that when we close lectures in the night, please don't walk alone around the, outside the compound. You can easily be attacked. We expect you to either have lifts from your colleagues or you walk in groups so that you'll be safe. Thank you very much for your kind attention and I wish you Godspeed. Thank you so much, Mr. Fokusako dear. Um, Professor James Abugri will now take us through the academic uh, issues. It is the main focus of every one of us here, the academic part of all these other things that we've heard. So Professor James Abugri, if you are online, kindly take us through the academic issues that we have to deal with. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Abo. Uh, I think who is the one in charge of uploading the documents? Uh, because from my side here, I... Who is, who is the one? Hello, Prof. Um... You are co-host, so you'll be able to share your screen if you have. So share screen and I am not getting, I'm not able to share it from here. I don't know why. You've been made a co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. From here. Okay. Okay, once again, a very good evening to all of you and welcome to this best excellent school of business that we have in our country and even in Africa. Uh, I couldn't agree much with my colleague who said it is the only business school that you can get 
that is very well coming. But the best part actually is what we are going to talk about. I, Professor Say has already talked a little bit about the academic issues, the general academic issues of the university. And uh, uh, the school administrator has talked about the facilities. Mm -hmm. But I think the essence of what we are coming here is to take a certificate. So kindly pay attention to some of the things that I'll be saying. Even though Professor Ose has already said part of them, and then so that you may not have, you will have a, an easy flow academic life here. So again, to follow a little bit or to emphasize on what Professor Ose said is that make sure that you get a handbook. And the handbook will actually tell you what is required of you as a master student and what is required of you to be able to graduate and follow that. What I will say is that do not normally listen to colleagues. You can listen to colleagues, but read the handbook and also find out because some colleagues sometimes give wrong information to students. And so pay attention to the handbook and then you can also listen to people, but go exactly to the handbook. Each student should download the graduate handbook from the School of Graduate Studies, which is online and you can get it. You can access it through this, and that is http admissions.ug.edu.gh at graduateapply.login and .php. So if you use a serial number and pin, you will get it. That is why we normally tell you that once you buy the scratch card, do not throw it away. You can find it. And you can use that one, this what I've said, for example, for your admission letter. And once you get admission letter, then that means you have access to what we call the graduate handbook, which you can also find it on the, what we call the website, the same website at the school there. So for the actual registration, visit the UG website and what we have www.ug.edu.gh and the steps will give you the chance to follow them and then you do your registration. So a student who fails to register during the registration period shall forfeit his or her right to register for the semester. And a lot of people take this for granted. A lot of students take this for granted and sometimes because their name, they've already been given what we call admission letters, they do not register. And then they come to sit in the classroom. But they forget that if you do not register, your name is not a bona fide part of the university. And so when you even, you are going to take the exams, your name may not be on the register. The lecturer cannot enter your marks for you. So that becomes a problem. So make sure you register. And for this sandwich that we are about to start, the deadline for registration will be Friday, the 3rd of June. So you have from now till any time that you take your academic, I mean, you download your admission letter and most of you can go on. As I said earlier on, your admission letter is found from the HTTP admission.ed.ug.edu.gh and then you log in with your serial number and pin. So once you take that thing, you can then go into your various courses, this is, and then you. I think registration for the courses according to your program options are also given in the sense that you can always meet the ICT people who are always ready there to take you through some of the courses that you register. So these programs are just one year programs that we talk about so for now from 25th April up to say May that you'll be writing the examination uh, or May that you'll be ending. Uh, 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 that will be your first semester. And then you will then be writing the examination say in July or something like that. And so that is a first semester and it's equivalent to Normally, when we say a one year, sometimes people do not get it. But you know, because your second semester is likely to come the following year. So that becomes also another year. 
But in all, it is a one year program. And just as the Dean of Graduate School Professor said, a sandwich normally comes after the normal, that is the regular courses. So it comes after the first and second semester. It comes in between the first and second semester of the regular courses. That's why we call it sandwich. So your first semester, you make sure that you might have registered all these things and then add, take the courses accordingly. The courses may vary as you are here. Those who do uh, 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 MA, organizational leadership and governance, for instance, all the courses are same. So you are likely not to get what we call elective courses. So all of you register based on the same courses. There are some of the courses that electives are there. I know clinical leadership, for instance, there are certain electives that some people may go into. However, the elective that some people, some of you are likely to, if you are doing international business, you cannot go to say clinical leadership and go and take an elective. If you want to do that, ask the course coordinator first to see whether it will help in your certification. It will help in your course. Because sometimes most students will just look at the courses and look elsewhere, other programs. And when they see that the course looks, excuse me to say, palatable, then they just say, oh, I'll go and take this course. Inquire first to see how viable is it? Is it going to help you? Is it even acceptable before then you can do that? So the maximum period allowed beyond the one year is one semester, as Professor Se has said. And this is as a result of sometimes our own negligence of duty. Some of us lack of registration, or some of us, we don't read, we don't attend lectures. We take lectures for granted. And when the results come and it's not good, it simply means that you have to rewrite it. So if you write a second semester one and it doesn't work, it means that you have one semester that is ahead of the graduation. So your colleagues might have graduated or would have graduated. And then you will not come in to write, to register. So only one semester is given. If not, you are going to pay some money for that, as he said. So students are encouraged to ensure that they complete their study within the maximum period of three semesters. But I will say here that, why won't you use the two semesters, make use of your two semesters? These courses, if you sit in, listen to the lecturers and whatever they say, and you are serious with the money that you have used and invested, I don't think you need three semesters for that. So the ball is in your court. And if you want to use three semesters, if you want to use four semesters, well, it will depend on you yourself. I will encourage you to use just two semesters. You can't go beyond the three semesters anyway. Extension, I don't think I need to belabor here because just as Professor Se had already talked about, you'll be paying some fees in addition because if you need an extension as a result of what I've said, because you haven't finished the work, sometimes it may not be your fault. People, uh, I mean, fall sick. And then when you fall sick, for instance, there is likely that you have an extension. And so you can write to your head, to the dean and graduate school, you know, graduate school, for instance, and they give you the extension. They may ask you based on your decision to pay a little bit of money, then they enroll you into the situation. I will encourage that if you are well and you can do the two semesters, do it because normally going for an extension is a difficult process. I can tell you that there are some students who are going through that right now, and it's not an easy thing. They wish they hadn't actually gone for that. If it is something that is a natural thing, then it's better. But if it's something that is your own fault, it becomes a very difficult thing. So I will encourage you to make maximum use of your time here and don't even pay more fees if you want it. If you have too much money, for instance, I can put a basket down and come and put it so that we can use it to organize a party after the two semester, we'll all eat the food. I think it will be good. Uh, uh, I'm not saying the university doesn't need much of your money anyway. So once you fail, you are going to retake the course. And some people think that, you see, universities have their rules and regulations and they have their culture. Some of us come from some universities that perhaps maybe the way the culture is done, 
you may decide to forfeit certain assignments. You may decide to take for granted some assignments, some lectures and other things. And you think that perhaps it is applicable here or something of that nature. They said, ask and it shall be given. But it is better for you to learn on the roofs because here all assignments count to grading of your course. And so just like Professor said, and we'll be coming to that, if you get below 50 for us, and that is a fail. So you have to, at the graduate level, you have to rewrite it. And so on. And if you are rewriting, you have to register and pay the money before you are given the chance to. So make sure that you don't rewrite. Sit down, everything is possible. You can do it. So course credits, have a one year coursework. And that is what I encourage you again. The graduate book is there, you look at them. So we have courses from 36. There are some of them that, as I said, just fix. You can't go beyond that. And I know certainly a um, uh, 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 master of arts in original leadership, for instance, is fixed because the courses that you do, you do seven courses for first semester, then you do six courses for second semester, plus your dissertation is a dissertation actually, which is six credit. So normally there is no time for you to go and be taking some elective. I mean, we don't give time for elective for that, but there is a prescribed elective within the course that you can take. I think it's decision-making and leadership, leadership and decision-making in organizations or something like that, which all of you will take. But uh, so there are some of the courses maybe that uh, some of that you are allowed to take uh, free credits, but your credit shouldn't go beyond the 36 credits. And so you look at it and see if you think you are too good and you want to go beyond. And as we said, the total here should be about 39 credits. So if you have say 30, 30 credits, plus the long AC that gives you six credits and the seminars are compulsory. And I will emphasize here, just like Professor Seth said earlier on, seminars have become part of what we call the graduate education in the University of Ghana. And sometimes because that one, we don't write examinations, students take it for granted. I can tell you certainty that there are some students who took this seminar for granted and they are wallowing in sadness today. So the essence is that even though the seminar, we don't organize what we call examination for them, but the lectures or the school has set certain things for you to be able to be graded because you do presentations. And I know some of us, I mean, presentation and attendance. So when you don't attend seminars and you think that you just go and present it and then you, your people will fail, you can fail. And once you get even all of them, A, 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 and you get seminar F or D, you cannot graduate. It is a compulsory course. So again, look at the courses and say, the core courses, if you fail in one, you cannot graduate because those are the things that we certify first before you are allowed to meet the normal, uh, uh, what do you call it? We'll first of all see whether have you been, have you done up to the 39 credits? Then we'll look at the core courses. Have you failed in one core course? If you fail in one course and you even do 60 credits, you cannot graduate. So pay attention to your core courses. And then the core courses, certainly the long essay is one. And uh, especially this era of COVID and so on, uh, because the long essay, you are even when we weren't in the COVID mood, mostly the long essay is done in sense that some lecturers should be communicating with their students online. So students sometimes take this for granted also. They can go and copy from somewhere else and just come and give it to the lecture. I hope you heard what the professor said. Here we use plagiarism, the, 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 the turn it in uh, software. So you'll be caught. Even if you are not caught today, you'll be caught last minute. It's better to even be caught earlier so that you can do corrections and get back than when they catch you last minute. That one is it's always a shame because everybody will know. So it's just take your time and do it. Send your drafts to your supervisor and make sure you follow it. It's just a one-year course and you are done and go. 
Uh, I think there is a law that says that love God and go your way. So when you come to University of Ghana, just love the regulations and just go your way. So the choice of courses for each semester may vary depending on the department and the course that you are doing. So all the courses that you do this semester, for example, they are not carried forward. You are going to do a different course altogether the next semester that amounts to the one year course. So the grading system. Now, if you look at the grading system, you say grade A, B plus B, C, D, and F. And that is at the graduate level, this is what we have. You can see the numerical marks here in terms of percentage. A is 80 to 100. I don't want the interpretation because that is a different thing altogether. You can all see it, but uh, then B plus 70 to 79. B is 60, 69, and then C is 50, 59. I, there's D, there's F. I think all of us are always craving for something like an A or maybe B plus or B or to pass C. But if you look at these grades or this numerical max, for instance, 50 max to 59 is not an easy term. You may see it, it looks easy, but it is difficult. So sometimes when the results come and you see people will see, then they go to say, why did I get this? Then you start from, you will be surprised that you get there and check and realize that even sometimes the lecturer just adds their own generous marks to this. In short, this is presented to you to let you know that A is 80 to 100. If you want A, good. It is there for you to work and get your excellence. But if you don't work and you think that you can get an A to 100, well, I think it is good because some people will do Lotto and win, some do Lotto and they don't win. So it is difficult getting an 80 to 100, but it is not impossible. Everybody can get it. You have to work hard to get it. So put this sense in mind, 50 max to 59 is not an easy term because once you fall below the 50, you have to rewrite, you have to register with money and write that subject again. How sure are you that you are going to write and pass again? So why not just pay attention to some of these things in a way? And the easier way to normally pass some of these things is that assignments are also part of the composite, what we call final marks. And some people miss assignments and they think that only the exams can help them to get certain marks. I think it is going to be difficult. So make sure you do the assignments and submit them on time and have your grade and then the exams and then so that ends. I think they've already talked about the examination, how it is going to be, because there are sometimes in examinations, uh, when a student is late after 30 minutes, for instance, you are not allowed to enter the examination room and you cannot write. It means that you have to wait for the next semester to write it. And in your case, your course, for instance, so you'll be writing that course with the first year that will be coming, you see. And so don't come and give excuse that traffic, sickness and other things all. Nobody will take them examination, they don't do that. So find a way to make sure that you come for your examinations and so on. However, if you have a genuine course, for instance, you can normally see the lecturer concern or you meet your coordinator and discuss with them far before. Here we believe in proactivity. We don't want reactivity because we, a lot many of us want to do things. Then afterwards we begin to give this sense. So if you slap me and tell me sorry, I mean, you've already slapped, you understand? It is better to tell me that, sorry, I may slap you tomorrow so that I prepare myself and then say, don't slap. That is proactivity. So course and lecture is also an important thing. And here, I emphasize, why? Because we all are human beings. You have paid in some money, that is investment to come for what we call this, what these wonderful courses and certificates. Lecturers are human beings who are teaching you. So at the end of it, we all are supposed to, whatever we do, we answer for them. It is your duty to look at the lecturer and then what we call assess because the university has made it is one of the ways, for instance, the students assess lectures based on the courses that they do. You are being taught you know the way the person teaches you. So when the course evaluation comes, and normally what we do is that it's online. 
try as much as possible to go in there and evaluate the lecture because we normally use these things to make sure to improve the system for other people to come. So don't just take it that, oh, it's one of the things who I will not do. It doesn't help you. It will not help the university and it will not help Ghana. Make sure that you evaluate the lectures. But look, they say students are supposed to evaluate the various courses and lectures within the semester. Don't look at the lecture's personality and evaluate. You are evaluating what he does, the teaching, and so on. And I know you, some of you have already done that a lot. So because for the sake of improving the courses and for the university too. So course lectures evaluation form will be sent to students in the course of the semester. In fact, it's via email. Normally what we do that they announce to you and then there is a link that you click on and then you just go and then maybe you, you evaluate the course. And when you are evaluated, nobody even knows. Even if it is your wife, she will not know. If it's your husband, she will not even know whether you are the one or not. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's anonymous, it can never be seen. And even if it is seen, what is wrong with that? Nobody can do anything to you. But I assure you that never, the way it is done, you can't know it. But I also use this thing today to say that, you see, you are evaluating people and it is not an insult. Maybe you are evaluating what a person is done. Just be fair to the person and tell the person that this, but the insults, are not good. We are a matured institution and these courses are matured masters therefore just speak to the issue and so on. And I think that will be very fine so that we can use them to correct most of the things for instance. So once a student has been enrolled for a particular program, he or she cannot change to another program. Of course, uh, I think that Ms. Professor Sarah has also spoken about that thing. And there are some few situations that sometimes we try to see uh, depending on the situation. But once you pay your monies and you say, I want any of your leadership and governance, you come and attend the lecture one day, you register for everything, then you go and say, no, I want international business and so on. You are making things difficult for the university, things difficult for yourself and things difficult for everybody. It is not possible, you see. So just always take a chance, prepare yourself before you do all those things. Uh, I think it's, Interruption of study by program. Do I need to go on this because uh, the professor say has already spoken about this in this sense. But maybe some of you didn't hear, let me just run. A student registered for a graduate program may not break his or her program for study for more than one semester, except with express written permission from the board of graduate studies. So you have to write through your head of department to the dean of graduate studies for permission before. Maybe something has happened that you want to stop the distance and then do that. It is acceptable. Uh, you are not going well. You want to travel for a, a serious problem, maybe medical or other thing, for instance, you can write and defer it for the next distance. The money that you've paid will be held in trust for you when you come. Maybe accelerative increase the fee, which has not been for more than 10 years now. I've not heard of the university ever increasing any fee more than that, it's up to even 20 years. So it is still going to be, your fee will still be there and you come and then you start attending. You just come back and right there, I've come back and do through the process again and then you come into the system again. So don't just come and then you go and sit in classroom without writing back for them to put you back because these are systems that are working. So once you go out, your name may go out of the system. And if you come and you don't write to and uh, and you are just sitting down, if your grades come, no lecturer can put your grades there because your name is out of the system. So always make sure that at one point in time, you are a valid student of the university and the university will tell you that. Even also once your name go out, then you have to begin the process to come in again. It's quite a difficult process, but you need to do this. Such a student shall apply in advance to the board of graduate students to the head of department. Well, I've already stated it and I think that's so. Permission must be duly granted by the Board of Graduate Studies and communicated to the applicant before he or she leaves the university. There are situations where people just write deferment. Uh, okay, uh, application for deferment of the data and then uh, to the head of department, to the graduate studies, and, and then give it to somebody, maybe say a dispatch writer, go and give it to them, and then off he's gone. Look. Yeah, you don't even know where the letter lands. We don't, we haven't gotten the letter. Nobody has said anything and you have gone. 
only to come back to realize that we're looking for you there, but we didn't see you. What do we do? We put X, 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 and you know, I wrote a letter, wrote a letter where, did you get a response? No. So do the thing the right way. Permission must be duly granted before. So think about all those things earlier before you do any deferment. Where a student breaks his or her study for more than one semester, he or she shall not normally be deemed to have lost any accumulated credits. Such a student may be allowed to reapply for admission to the university. So you see how difficult the process is. That's what I advise you that the two semesters are just enough. Why do you want to go further, further than that? Within one year, it is gone and you are. You can now go and do whatever you want to do. If you want to go to the moon, the sun, you can go and come back. So how do you become eligible for examination? Because examination are not just there that is good examination, then you just go and then write. It is not like that. A student should have attended all lectures seminars and undertaking all assignments for the program to be eligible for examination. In fact, let me add this. Sometimes you have to pay the money before you are eligible for examination because you sometimes if you are not, you don't want to be embarrassed, you can be sitting in that examination room and then they'll just come and then I see if you see it's just like the trot throw the way they distance. When we are sitting there, they say yes, all of you, those at the back, give your money. You see some the accountants or some people just come in. And we don't have any of this because you, are, you, you haven't paid your money and so on. So make sure that all these things are done and you become eligible. But the most important thing again is that attend lectures. The university has rules that you don't attend lectures up to some time, for instance, you forfeit your studentship. Some people think that they are, they, are, they are wise because these days, because student numbers are large, they don't know that lectures have a way of taking uh, what we call roll call and so on. So they just vanish into thin air and they just come three days to examination and think that because maybe slides are given to people, they can just go and write it. You know, people have a way of tracking you and getting you. So in short, attend all lectures, seminars, undertake all the assignments for this, and so that your examination will be free flowing. Okay, submission of long essay and dissertation. Long essay should be submitted one month before the start of final examination. That is the second semester. In fact, uh, 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 so we'll be starting in uh, the second semester, 25th April. So that is next week, Monday. So the second year should have been submitting their long essays by then. Before they start the examination and then uh, before they, no, before they start the, what do you call it? Uh, 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 the second semester, you see? Because here is a case you are doing a semester work culminating into examination and you are doing your long essay that has been there for a very long time. It delays you, it makes you not to do the good work and so on. So while I think that the various coordinators will normally speak to you people, especially first years as you come in, the coordinators will tell you when to submit your titles for dissertation, when they will do the allocations and what you're supposed to uh, go through. During the seminar classes, I think that, and then the research methods too, I think that the lectures concern will also tell you most of these things. And it's very important. Sometimes people take these things for granted. By the time they know they finish all the exams, the long essay is now become, becomes an abacross on them, how to do it. That is where you now do a you do bad work, but if you start the distance, the process and do it as the best way that you can do, you will finish it. You see, little by week is, is next. So deferment of examination on grounds of ill health. A student who has satisfied all the requirements that is lectures, tutorials, seminars, undertaking all other activities and assignments has prescribed for the courses he or she has registered for but is unable to take the examination at the end of it, on grounds that he or she is not well, shall on application to the Dean of Graduate Studies and on provision of, of a medical certificate issued or endorsed by the Director of the University Health Services, shall be allowed to defer the semester examination and take the examination at the next offering. So you see, don't wait until you go to the examination of uh, distance. And when you read question one, it doesn't go. Question two, it doesn't go. Then you say, I'm sick. I want to defer for next distance. 
No, we don't do that. If you were not well, that is before you even start examination, you should have gone to, cons I mean, to see a medical doctor to give you permission and you write to the Dean of Graduate Students. So you don't just sit in the examination room and say, it's, no, I'm sick and I cannot write it. So allow me to come next year to write. That is not acceptable. So I think you pay attention to most of these things, yeah. So examinations will be held at the end of every semester years, be written on weekends from June 11th, 2022 to June 20, C 2022. In actual fact, when you start your, your lectures on Monday onwards, in June, the exams, so lectures will be on weekdays, evenings, weekends, mornings, afternoons, and evenings. But the examination, we've made it flexible in that it's only weekends. So a paper on a Saturday, a paper on a Sunday, because we know some of you might have taken leave and then you are working and so make it this so you come and write only a paper on a Saturday. It may be that you are writing it in the morning and in the afternoon you are free to revise. And then the following Sunday, maybe Sunday you write in the morning or in the afternoon, depending on the situation. So, but all exams are that your exams are written on weekends. And so that is the time from 8, 11, 12, and 5 p.m. So students should read regulations governing the university examination in the handbook for the master's degree. Again, as we started, I talked about the handbook. So the handbook now becomes what we call your, I don't know the book, is it your Bible that you can always use or your wallet or your purse that you open it at any time and look at it, it becomes your constitution. And I think it will save you. Eligibility for the graduate degree. So this is all what you are looking for. You applied, you were taken, you have attended lectures and you are expecting to get a certificate that certifies you that you have done this course in this prestigious university. So the degree is not just thrown to you. The degree shall be awarded to a candidate who has been enrolled and has followed the approved course of study, which we have talked about from the beginning till now, over the period and has fulfilled all requirements. So academic, financial, ethical, et cetera, you see. So you can't tell lies. Academic, you have to meet your academic, the academic requirements, as we stated. You have to pay the necessary fee you cannot uh, say you can't sit in a trotter from here to Accra without pay. You certainly pay because the university needs money to run all this thing, brings your certificates for you, and so on. And then, yes, this is what qualifies you to get your degree. And that's what we are all always yearning for the satisfaction that we are all waiting for to get. You see. So, is there anything that I need to add? No, we have said a lot of things, interesting things. So I want to thank you for your kind attention and to tell you that you are very welcome back. You are very welcome to this prestigious university and I think you are going to enjoy your time. So I'll leave you to my very good, yeah, that's my wife anyway, Dr. Bo to take over. Okay. Thank you very much. Professor <laughs> Abugri. <laughs> I can see the way you are laughing. That's good. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> All right. So thank you. Thank you, Prof. Abugri. And um, I think some of uh, the coordinators from the various programs are online. And so they will each have um, two minutes to just say something about their programs. So Professor Lord Mensah, is there something you would want to say before we go into the Q and A session? If Prof. Yeah, Lord Mensah is um, yes, okay. well, thank you very much, uh, Professor oh. Abo. Um, hey. Yes, so um, <laughs> oh yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, <laughs> all right, sorry about that. Uh, but it's in the line, so uh, you have to re you have to receive it uh, in Jesus' name. I take them. Mm. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for those of you on financial risk management, uh, thank you for applying for the program. And uh, I can assure you that you're going to enjoy every bit of the uh, program. Um, here, 
you're going to understand the real roots of risk, how to measure it, how to quantify it, and then how to assess it. Very, very important in our daily lives. You know? So I don't need to talk too much about the cost, but what you need to take home from here is we're going to give you the course outline, the program in general, all the courses in there, so that you benchmark our lecturers on their delivery to what you have you know, in your hands. So the course outline will be given to you. If a lecturer comes and is covering the outline, you know it or you don't know it. We want to be transparent enough. Uh, that is part of an organization's success. So we're going to make sure that we share the program outline with you so that you benchmark the students on the other, sorry, the lecturers on the other delivery. So that is what I can add on, uh, uh, Dr. Ball. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Mensa. Um, is Prof. Mahmoud online? Yes, I'm online. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Abo, for the opportunity. Um, I think the angle that I will come in has to do with, I know some of the students haven't received their either provisional letters or um, the real admission letters. And I just want to assure them that uh, the process is still ongoing. So they should not be one size patients. And we are working to make sure that uh, they all receive the necessary documentation that they need to be in the program. It's a process, it's a process. Uh, first of all, um, we'll make sure that uh, if If you have done some payments, and then we end you, we issue you the real admission. Am I breaking? Is it better? Yes, it's better. Is it better? Okay, okay, okay. So I think better that's now. the message I yes, have for both. them. Yeah, so that nobody should get panic. At the end of the day, uh, we'll make sure that we sort everybody out. And then we are ready. We are ready for them, hopefully this week, when the classes uh, begin, uh, all course allocations have been done. So we are ready and we hope to see them soon in class. Thank you very much, Dr. Abba, for the opportunity. Thank you, Prof. Mahmoud. I see um, Dr. Joshua Oforiaman, for you are online. I can I actually, I actually see you. I see your face. Okay. If okay. Is there anything you would want to talk about? Just briefly, please. Yes, Dr. Abba. Um, I'm stepping in for the program coordinator, who is um, Dr. Teoflos Yamiche, who is currently engaged somewhere else. Um, MSc Procurement and Supply Chain Management students who wish to warmly welcome you on board the program. It's a new program here in the University of Ghana, but we, we have built a strong foundation to make the program is so enjoyable. Our closest competitors in this area is um, University of um, Cape Coast and then KNUS, KNUSD as well. Um, you would all admit that procurement is a big issue in our country now. Uh, most entity heads get into trouble because of procurement and supply chain related issues. We have therefore designed this program to build the capacity. Some of these people, some of these entity has get into trouble, not because they are naturally corrupt, but because of lack of capacity. So this program has been designed to build your capacity to be able to manage the procurement and supply chain function, both in the public sector, as well as the private sector. In all you'll be doing for the first semester, you'll be doing four core courses and one, at least one elective course, or you may choose to go for two elective courses. Uh, a couple of the courses appear to be mathematical, but it's not, it's not a strong mathematics that you can do. Uh, typically the 
advanced operations and supply chain management, there are mathematical issues in there that needs to be um, taught. So brace up yourself for such issues. But I think apart from that, the rest are all um, generally manageable courses, management courses that you can, you can handle. I wish, um, I should also point out that the program has um, currently is receiving SIPS accreditation. So going through this program means that you are killing uh, two birds with a stone. When you graduate, you can apply to the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply UK, where you receive exemption and then you get the final um, level six certificate where you can use the initials MSIPS, which means member Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. So you are killing two beds with a single stone. And so um, please uh, take it seriously. My last advice here is that yes, uh, you need to take your assignments seriously like the previous um, speakers have emphasized. That's one thing we are seeing here. Uh, something because they are workers, they need, we need to be so flexible that they will submit their, their assignment at their own place. By University of Ghana, it's no, no, no. We strictly go by time deadlines. So please make sure that if assignment deadlines are given, you comply with them. And then uh, also know that all our lecturers are quite accommodating and friendly, but I must emphasize that they are also extremely firm and uncompromising. So don't think that because you are a worker and you have your resources, you can put your, push your resources through to get your certificate. No. Remember that a higher KCM. So what about KCM? Go according to what the KCM says. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Abo. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Um, Joshua Okoriyama. Um, for the health workers, the health professionals, the clinicians amongst us, uh, let me just say that I welcome you all to the University of Ghana Business School. I am the coordinator for the MSc Clinical Leadership and Management Program. And the fact that you registered for this course means that you are in line with current thinking, which is the thinking that we need to add um, corporate values to our clinical values to make very meaningful use of the, res the scarce resources we have in the health sector in order to have very, very useful patient outcomes. So thank you, clinical leadership and management students. I will hope to see you within the week. And I can assure you, you're going to really, really have a great time. And it will be worth your while. I can assure you of that. Thank you all so much for your attention. I will now pause here for any questions um, to our coordinators. The dean of the uh, graduate school is also around. The school administrator is equally around. And so if there's anything at all that you're not clear with, and you want to ask, I think this is the time. Thank you. Um, Um, I think Mr. Ashiti, you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, um, good evening to everyone and thanks Prof and all the presenters for a very wonderful presentation. Yeah, I wanted to find out some of us were students of UG and our email, um, I think is quite active, but we're giving another password for the same email. So I wanted to find out if um, we should go ahead and change the password and use the, the one in the provisional letter, or we should wait for further um, direction towards that. Um, Mr. Ashiti, I don't know how you got a password because usually you are just giving an email um, address, not a password. You are supposed to form your own 
I don't know about the password. Where are the IT guys? Kwame, is Brad Kwame here? It's your student ID. Okay. It's the student's ID. Yes. So considering the fact that some of them have old emails, are they using the student ID to open that old, old email address because they came to University of Ghana? Yes. Yes. It's the same, it's the so they can use the same login details? Yes. Okay. It doesn't go, it should just like I'm Okay. Then we'll okay. Right. So Ashiti, um, from what I gather, if you already had an email address from the University of Ghana, you can still log in with the same details. If you're having issues, you contact the IT uh, unit and they will sort you out. But apparently the passwords that were given to all of you were your index numbers. Everybody is using your own index number. I'm sure if you want to change it, you can yes. do so later on. If you want to change it from your index number, you can just do that. Uh, I hope that works for you, Mr. Ashiti. Thank you. Please go ahead. Um, hello, good evening, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, my question is to the coordinator for organizational leadership in governance, um, in the person of Professor um, Abu Gray. And please, I want to know the medium with which um, the lectures are going to be go on or be held, since most of our lectures will be online. I want to know the medium. Will it be on Zoom or how is it going to be? Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that is Francisca. Is this Francisca or who was asking the question? Yeah, she's the one. Please go ahead. Bro. Oh, okay. All right, so it is just going to be the same medium as the other courses, but I think that as you specified it, uh, basically, in the university here, we have two mediums, if it is, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, online. So I particularly, I use Zoom, but we also have what we call Microsoft Teams that we are going to be using. Uh, some of them may use Microsoft Teams, some will use Zoom, it's still the same thing. So what I would advise is that most of you try to download the Zoom and download also Microsoft Teams so that in case any lecture comes to use it. We were using Zoom, the whole University of Ghana, but uh, the Zoom has certain capacity that people felt that up to about a thousand plus, it cannot pick up to that number, uh, say even more than say 300 and so on. And so the university then decided to move to what we call Microsoft Teams. And so that is, the problem. So these days you see that a lot of us will be using the Microsoft Teams. So just download the two of them and prepare for that. Yeah. Yes, Prof. Thank you very much. But when it is also the physical one, uh, that is the, the Saturday's one that we are going to meet you, the time that it is in, be rest assured that you see our faces there and we'll also see your face. And we'll look happy to see you. Okay. On the same faces notes. May I invite Mary Vanderpoy? Please go ahead. Good evening, and thank you very much for the opportunity given. And please, on our admission letter that I printed out, the fees was 8961 But the provisional admission letter that they gave me, the fees that I paid was 8410 so I don't know whether I should top up or the first one that I paid is actual fees for the semester. Um, Mary, the school administrator will address that. So just yeah, I, I yes, yeah, I think there has been a marginal uh, increase in the the fees. It's not so much, so that's why uh, that's what is accounting for the difference. But we will explain that later. Okay. Okay, so please, I should hold on with the top up. No, the payment, now. you can make the payment with the, uh, if you have the full amount, you can pay because it will be credited to you. 
it's still your own money to be credited to you. So you can go ahead and make the payment. Okay, new, I, I, uh, I, I have made a payment of 8,410. Yeah, it's okay. That, that was the payment that you gave. Yeah, I'm saying you can register with that and later okay. on the difference can be the, the payment of the difference can be made. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Right. Two minutes. Uber force. Um, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening to all. So, uh, my question is for MSc Accounting and Finance. I have received both the actual letter and then the provisional letter, and I have also made the payment. So, I tried to use the student. ID and then the pin that they gave me to register for the courses. I accessed the MIS and then there was no course available for me to register. <laughs> but per the timetable, the course, the lectures will be starting on Monday. That, that is pretty fit. So how can I register before <laughs> the time? Do we have accounting? A study online. Dr. Teddy. Uh, accounting. Well, nobody from accounting. Uh, but I'm sure the, the issue of registration, the difficulty could be a network issue, which I'm sure if you are just a little bit patient, you will get it through. Like uh, Prof. Mahmoud said, it's a process. And uh, around this time, everybody is kind of logging on. And so it gets overwhelmed sometimes. So. I want to be hopeful that if you keep trying, you should be able to sort that out. But even no. when lectures start, when we start lectures, you can still be trying um, on net. And if you are still not getting it, then contact the IT uh, unit and I'm sure. Okay, uh, so for this one, I, I was able to access the, the, uh, the MIS, but the courses were not available for me to register. Oh, the courses are, do you know who your coordinator is? No, please. The, the name of the coordinator? The MSC Accounting and Finance. The name yeah, there's the a name. Program. There's a name. There are contact details on each program. So if you could just communicate with the uh, contact details on the program. Check, check oh. properly. You see a name. You see an email address. You see a number. Oh. Every, <laughs> program has, every program has that. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me see. I think Evelyn. Kesua, you can go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to ask this question. Please, uh, this question goes to uh, my coordinator, Professor Abugui. Please, can we have access to the university facility, especially the ICT and the library at any given time, since the internet connections may not warrant that we have all our lectures in the house, or will the accessibility of those facilities will be only in, in the sections of in-persons? I want to have clarity on that. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, um, I'm sure Prof. Abugri is not online right now. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, what? Uh, sorry for that. I just got up and then I'm sorry I've been caught on a waist. Oh, uh, uh, can, can you just sorry. summarize what you said? I beg you. I'm, okay, I'm Prof. I, I was. I wanted to see clarification on the accessibility to the university facilities, even when we have online uh, lecture sessions. As to example, ICT and the library facility, because 
uh, with our internet connections that we have in this country, mm. you can't guarantee full proof that each lecture you have. So sometimes you may want to uh, come and assess the internet on the university yeah. facility. So are we guarantee every day or it's only when we have in-person lecture sessions? No, just like the school administrator said, and mm -hmm. I think that what he said was that once you have your ID card, in okay. fact, once you have enrolled into the university, you are not a member of the University of Ghana. So okay. you are a bona fide property, a member here, you can walk anywhere, but I'm not saying go around be touching things. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So you can sit somewhere, should any security manager come to ask you, you just say, but I mean, you have your card actually to show that. So okay. let me come back straight to your question. Mm -hmm. You can access any facility that you want. If you are near here, for instance, that you want to come to the BAM library, you can sit in the BAM library and have your class on okay. condition that you don't disturb other people, but there are places that you can do that. You can go to any of the facilities, the business school library, the graduate school building, for instance, if you are not close, we also have 24 hour library. Current. You can go there and access anything that you want at okay. any point in time. Sunday, Monday, 24 hours, seven days a week. You can please, do am that. I, please, am I permitted to add my second question? Yes. Okay, my second question is, are the end of examination only to be written in the uh, graduate block? That is in person, all the exams. So why do you want us to write it? In your house or? No, sir. But where? I, I, I thought there's option of online. Ah, uh, okay, that's what you wanted. Well, uh, no, online examination is, if there is an online examination, which we did two years ago when the COVID just came at its peak, but we okay. have a university facility, we call it a Sakai. So mm. you can do it through the Sakai system. That is the only thing. And there are certain medium that normally some lecturers you may take. I don't know. Mm. Uh, I did my exams all through the Sakai because the university, we should use the Sakai. And so that is what I did. Currently, oh, because you. we all are not doing in-person examination, doubt if there will be a lecturer who will get this online. Because mm. we try to uh, uh, make everything uniform. And so if we decide that there are going to be some online, you will be told that for now in person, it will be the graduate block. And the graduate block is a large block with facilities that can accommodate all of you. And so that is why we choose that place. But we cannot go any other place apart from that. But if we build new places, maybe we may go there. But for now, that is the place that we are going to organize our exams. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, guess what? I'm sure you've had your answers. Can we all just keep it simple and, if possible, ask just one question to give way for others as well to have their say? Because if we are going to dwell on just one person, a lot of people, a lot of us might not be able to ask whatever we want to ask, please. So keep it simple, straight to the point, and one question per person, please. Baba, Sade, uh, Baba Seidu. Okay, good evening. Thank you for giving me the honesty. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my Go question ahead. is about accounting and finance. Yeah, but the program outline we receive they online, then one weekend. I want to find out 20 feet. We're supposed to come on campus or we can stay online anywhere we are because some of us is coming from outside actually online for classes thank you Baba, Hello. i'm sure i'm sure your network is um, breaking but if i heard you right yeah you my, know, my question you want to know yeah. yeah you want to know if you are coming in person or you are doing it you are attending your lectures online is that so per the, per the pro, per what you received it means that for the first week we are doing online for the weekdays then the weekends will be uh, in person so I want to find out whether on that 25th, we should come to campus or we should stay in our various home for the online. Is the 25th a weekend or a weekday? 
is it a weekend please check if it's uh, the, the thing the thing is clear if it's a weekday it's online if it's the weekend it's in person the weekday which is my if it's the weekday then it is a, it is online isn't that clear oh yes Baba. i think i think dr abba once it's online you stay wherever you are you don't need yeah, to online to online means okay. wherever you are. <laughs> But Baba, yeah. if you want to come to campus and do your online, it's absolutely up to you. I mean, you can do that. Yeah. You have and make use that. of the free internet. Okay. <laughs> you can come. Okay, okay. I'm now getting it here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, let me see. Who, Le Lexia, I hope I had your name right. Lexia's iPhone. You see, when you join the line with iPhone and Galaxy and stuff, how do I identify you? But I hope your name is Lexia. Please go ahead. Lexia, go ahead and ask your question. Good evening, doctor. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to know when I would receive my actual admission letter so that I can be able to register. Lexi, have you paid your fees and you have your evidence of payment and all yes, that? Yes, please. I have, paid, I have paid and I have sent um, the, the scan email. receipts to the um, appropriate email addresses. Awesome. Awesome. You did, you did your part. So the rest of it is, is up to the administrators. So what you do is that you take the contact of whoever, I don't know which program you are pursuing, but then there's a contact person there. Um, we just need to follow up on that person to get your letter. Okay. It should be worked on by now. Yeah, it should be. Okay. There are quite a number of letters that are being worked on. And so these things might take time. Just be patient. For as long as you've paid your fees, you have your receipts, you are in. I mean, nobody can push you out of the program. Relax. Okay. 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 Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. You're welcome. Um, David. Yes. Good evening. Uh, thank you. Please, my question is about um, uh, fee payments and then... Um, in the event that you don't make a full payment, the subsequent payments, how do you get um, those ones captured in your name? Does it have to go through the same process of... Uh... Yeah, Lexia, you're still there. Yeah, Lexia, you're still there. The same process by which you made uh, the first deposit. Uh, yes. You use the same process, David. Your line is going to be the address as earlier stated. Dr. Abo. Or Dr. Abo. Dr. Abo. Yes, Dr. Sir. Abo. Let me add um, a little bit of information about when they are uh, later paying, if you pay a little bit and you are going to top up. The most important thing you need is your ID card or your ID number on the pay slip. That is what we'll recognize you with. So always make sure that you indicate your what? Your ID number on the pay slip. And it will, it will reconcile, okay? It will reconcile with the earlier payment that you have made. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Gifty. Please go ahead. Madam Gifty Ajiman Yako. Madam. Yeah. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Please, I want to find out if I can come to the campus and have an assistance in the registration process. Perfect. Um, Perfect. I'm finding it difficult to register. There are a lot of young guys who are, I mean, they sleep and eat and drink computer. Come, they'll, they'll sort you out. Okay. So go to the office. Yeah. 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 Pardon? Go to the program office. 
program office. When okay. You come on campus, go to the, yeah, at the graduate building. Okay. Graduate building. Okay. Yo, thank you, sir. Thank You're you welcome. Very much. Oh. Right. Um, Boba. Boba. Um, I went to the uh, FRM coordinator. I wanted to, I want to find out if, in the case of quantitative finance and statistical inference, whether it will be experiential level or uh, mostly theoretical. Can you, can you mute the person who has his uh, background? Right, the question to the FRM coordinator. Yes, I'm the one, I'm the one. Hello, can you hear me, please? Pro, Hello. Go ahead now. Pro, yes. go ahead. Okay, then. Um, yes, it's a mixture of the two. Some of the courses are theoretical. Others, I mean, you have no choice than to use data for exploration. So uh, basically, you should expect you know, both sides. Is that clear, please? Hello? Did I answer your question? That is factual. Uh, Boba was playing music, and so I had to mute him. I'm sure he's heard you. Thank okay, you, Pro. That's fine. Right. Right. Um, Esther. Esther Galaxy A02S. Code number. Go ahead. Yes, please. Good evening, madam, and good evening to everyone. Please, my question is uh, I wanted to know because on 25th, we are starting lectures and we don't know whether we are starting the lectures online or in person. But as discussed earlier, I think it's going online because it's a weekday. But I don't know the course outline, what I'm going to do on Monday and the time that we are going to start the lectures to, it's not known. Hey, Sister Esther. Sister yes, Esther, chill. Please, madam. Chill, chill, what is chill, chill. My chill, yeah, yeah, yeah. chill, chill. When you come yes. on Monday, you will have every course that you are taking. The, the lecturer will bring the outlines and they will share it before they start anything else. So okay, but please, yeah. the same one day is online, so I don't know whether we should come in person. So I wanted to be Which, clear on that. Monday is twenty fifth. Monday. It's online. They will send you. They will send you the course outline online. Yeah. Online. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. Thank you yes. so much. And they, they Thank they you so it. much. Drink Mati, water. Mati. Drink water and relax. Right. Okay. okay. Bye. We'll see you soon. All right. <laughs> Bye. All right. Uh, Ajay Malik. Malik yeah. Ajay. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, Good evening to everyone. Yes. Good evening. So I would like to find out, yes, if I can come on campus to assess my um uh, how do you call it, my admission letter, because I think getting it on the portal is quite problematic. So if I can come awesome. on campus and get it, yeah. Come on campus, come on campus, you'll get people to even help you out. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have I missed any hand? Hey, okay. I thought I was done. Um iPhone. Okay. Sister or brother, iPhone. Please go ahead. Good evening. Ah, okay. So, sister iPhone. Yeah. Good evening. Um, please, I'm unable to register. It says the institution hasn't permitted me to do so. I think it's the congestion. Um, they are trying to match your payment. The, the, the school should have your data of payment, your evidence of payment, and then with that, it will be open for you to register. If you are not able to register, that means that reconciliation has not yet uh, taken place. So follow okay. through uh, with the, your program, the admin there, uh, check with them if they've done the reconciliation. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, Malikat, 
or Mulikat. Sorry, forgive me. It's Mulikat. Good evening. Mulikat. Oh, yes. forgive. I would just butchered your name. Please go Good ahead. Good evening. Uh, please, I said I've been receiving every other emails, but I've not received the emails of my admission letter. Please. You've made your payment. Yes, I made my payment since maybe last month, I think. I've and you submitted, it. did you submit yes. a receipt to the admin? Yes. Actually, the then day you're working went, on the request. The day I went for my payment, I did yeah. the payment. To, I went to pay for my sister and myself with the same surname. But mine, the ID, the serial number on my provisional admission letter wasn't going through. So I have to call the number on the on the, the contact number. So I was given a number of Mr. Henry to call. So Mr. Henry talk, spoke to the cashier then, and he gave me the school account number that I should pay into the school account number. So I paid, then I sent the receipt and the email, everything. But I've not received the admission letter since then. My sister has received it, but I've not received mine. So but you both, you both did it on the same day. Yes, I know. I actually wanted to pay on the same day, but mine wasn't going through. So the man said I should go the following day. Yeah, and so I that's why my... your sister got hers first. So um, relax. I can tell you are anxious, but yeah. it will be sorted out. Yeah, you'll yeah. be sorted out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, printing that mission letter is a bad It attention. takes time. Yeah, but Thank you will definitely get it. You will get the letter. Thank you, please. Right. So sorry about the inconvenience. As as the system looks, it's, it's a bit overwhelming around this time. So um, try and relax. You will surely uh, be given the admission letter. Um, Lawe Se Naughty. Lawe Naughty. Yes, madam. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have also received my admission letter, but I'm trying to register with it. So it's the same issues when it is an online thing that is like you're having issues with either you come on campus and get uh, assistance or just be patient. Whilst you go about your lectures, these things will fall in line with time. It's, it's just the process. So I'm sure you're able to register with time or better still, if you're around, just come. Come around. Okay. Call or call. There are some numbers that are offline. Yeah, if you can call, and what the problem is, they will help you solve it online. I don't know if you have the numbers. Do you know the hotlines? No, please. The hotlines are on. They are yeah. supposed to be online. There are some contact numbers. Yeah. They are online. Hello. Okay. Okay. Check, please check the site again. You will see a place where they've written hotline, like in case you need any assistance, some numbers to call. Yes, madam. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Osman. Um, good evening, Doug. Good, good evening. Um, okay, so it looks like my question has been answered. Um, okay. Because uh, right. the gentleman just asked a question about registration, and I'm about, having about the same challenges. Registration. Challenge. registration. Yes, and I'm okay. having the same challenges. Just, just get yourself ready. Come for the lectures and these things. For as long as you paid your fees, you are fine. You'll be all right. Okay. All right. Thank oh. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Rita. Rita. I see a Rita's just yes. Rita. Good okay. evening, Doc. Good evening. Please, I received a core structure and then it has non professional. I wish we could have um, somebody from the accounting and finance department to explain to us the difference between the non professional accountant cohorts and the professional accountant cohorts. Yeah, I think I, they are not here. I wish they were here too. Uh, so I, I, I do uh, feel what you mean. But I think what, from what I heard them the last time, it is those who want to do accounting and you do not have any accounting background, your class is different. It wouldn't be fair to mix you up with those who are already accountants. I don't know if you get what I mean. So if you do not have any accounting background and you are pursuing, you want to do accounting now, it's possible. Just that they need to take you through some basics 
for you to catch up with those who are already accountants. And so that's why they've divided the class. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, say Abochi. Hello, good evening. Oh, I thought, sorry. I thought it was a view, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Good evening, Doc. Uh, Good evening. Yeah, yeah, we had a session and some of the presenters, I think one of them was talking about uh, a session on Friday, which we didn't get clarification to. We want to find out whether there will be a session on Friday and the time. Thank you. And as part of the orientation? Yes. Yesterday, um, hello? Yes, madam. Yesterday, did somebody talk about a, a possible meeting on Friday? Yes, yes. I think the librarian will, will take them to some. Okay, so that's for the library services, just for you to understand how to use the library when you finally come to school. Is this Friday or Saturday? It's Friday. Friday, okay. So, yes. Jim, 4 p.m. Jijom. Yes. What time, you, what time did they give you yesterday? Uh, we started all the sessions at four, so I want to be sure whether that one too is at four p.m. I'm sure it will be the same time. I'm told that one is five, five, not four. Okay, doc. Thank you. Four, five, yeah, five for library, uh, taking you through the library and how to use it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Isaac Hagen. Thank you very much, Madam, for the information. Please, I would like to find out, when I got the provisional admission letter, I indicated my acceptance and also went ahead to make the payment. Now, the main admission letter is also saying I should write to indicate my acceptance. And I would like to find out if that is compulsory. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hager, you are you've written your acceptance for the provisional one. Mr. Hagen. Oh. Mr. Hagen. Hello, yes, 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 please. I have done that. Yeah. I was so finding it difficult written, to mute. Yeah, you've written for the provisional letter, and now you have the substantive one. You want to know if you should accept or, or not. Yes, oh. please. To, yes, to write again and accept, although I've already made the payment. Hey, eh, it's, you can just copy the first one and paste it <laughs> and sign it. I mean, because some people will take the provisional one and probably you've changed your mind or something came up and you will not be able to come. So you do understand why you would need to probably re respond to this one as well. Okay, you are muted. So I'm sure, but I'm sure you get what I mean. Okay, is there any other pressing question? Something nobody has asked, and then you still want to ask? Otherwise, the rest of it you can just contact your program coordinators and administrators and the contact numbers on the website, and you will be sorted out. Um, somebody is asking about Saturday lectures, whether you go to church. Yeah. Church, Saturday worshipers. There are equally Friday prayer uh, members who also pray on Fridays. There are Muslims who go to mosques on Fridays. So for that reason, University of Ghana doesn't set aside any day anymore to say that you are not having lectures. So lectures from Monday to Sunday, that's the new rule. Nobody is exempted. <laughs> Unfortunately, whether Friday worshiper, Saturday worshiper, Saturday worshiper, we are all coming to school. Yeah, sorry about that. Can you write the acceptance letters through emails and have it submitted, or you have to submit it personally? You can email it. You can email your acceptance letter, Nadia, Nalisa, Nalisa, yes. You can email your, your letter. I'm sure there are email addresses to the offices that you need to submit it to. So just send it to those uh, email addresses. Okay. Um, Stephen, Stephen, go ahead. Stephen. 
Stephen. Thank you very much. I wanted right. to find out whether the 5 p.m. start time for lectures could not be amended a little bit, since most of us are workers and in our part of the world, work usually closes at 5 p.m. And then lectures are also starting at exactly 5 p.m. Can we do something about it? Say 5.15 or 5.30? You know, the more we shift it for you to start late, then the more you would have to stay up later. That means your closing time will equally be late into the night. I'm sure you get that. So because you are coming to school, our hope is that you would have probably made some arrangements to be able to leave work a, a little bit earlier than you would have. This is a time you set aside to go to school. So um, maybe the adjustment should be done in your office instead. Because if we shift it, then you have to stay late into the night and that, that will also inconvenience some people. Yeah. Is there any other very uh, like difficult or complex issue somebody would want to clarify? Like I said, the rest of the conversations, you can contact us on campus and we'll, we'll still be able to explain a few more things. Yeah. Uh, Bernard, you are saying, what did you say? The registration seems to be a general problem. I hope the IT, yeah, the IT people must uh, get some coffee and get a bowl of water and soak their feet in it and sort this out. I agree with you, Bernard, yeah. I've given them the formula for solving the problem. Soak their feet in water and get a, a cup of coffee and sort it out one night. Yeah. Bernard, thank you. Uh, Belinda. Belinda, go ahead. Hello, good evening, Doc. Good evening. Please, if I could uh, remember very well, yesterday the librarian said that he wanted uh, to meet us in person because it was a bit uh, complicated for him to teach us how we go about it. So I want to know whether the Friday meeting is going to be on campus or it will be online. It will be online. Thank you, Thank you very it much. It will be online. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you too for asking a very straightforward question that wouldn't take us so much time. Thank you, Belinda. You are, I love you already. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. <laughs> Please, good evening. Hey. Okay, go ahead. Hey, please, I would like to know that if there's any arrangement for widows who are outside that cry, especially during the examination period, accommodation that we yeah. As well as the weekend, please. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can always when you contact uh people on campus uh, around that time most of the students would have been home so you can get accommodation arranged on campus and around campus depending on the type of accommodation you want it can be arranged it can be arranged belinda okay uh, oh no I, I said belinda yao yeah sorry uh, the name i wasn't still matching the name with the voice so forgive me um, iPhone X, regular, code opened. Ask your question. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Good evening. I was going to ask the same question as uh, Yao asked. Uh, if uh, for us coming up to Accra outside, uh, staying outside Accra, if you could get... You can, you can arrange accommodation, yeah. You can arrange accommodation. Just... When you start the course, uh, talk to some of the uh, admin assistants. They will help you out with some of the halls if they are available. Dr. Abbott, we can also direct them to the guest center. Uh, they can pick the university guest center's number and then make their booking in advance. Uh, I wonder how many of them will be able to book guest centers. But yeah, I'm sure they are listening. <laughs> <laughs> You are coming to school, you are coming to sleep in the hotel. All right, okay. <laughs> all right. Like some of them are rich. Oh yeah, you are right, you are very right. Yeah, so I'm sure they, they, they've taken notice of it. Beatrice, um, I'm trying to unmute you, Beatrice. Adai. 
Adade, sorry, Beatrice Adade. Beatrice Adade. Hey, the devil is a liar. And did Hello. You... Uh -huh. Hello. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Yes. I said I, am, I didn't respond or, uh, to the provisional letter given to me. Is it a, a cause why I'm, I've not received my uh, this in, um, actual admission letter? So just go ahead and respond. It's not too late. It's never too late to respond, Auntie <laughs> B. You can respond now. OK. Uh -huh. It's not late. It's not late. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Bernard. Reverend A. A. Bernard. Hello. Okay. Calvin. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Doc, please, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, please, I would like to know uh, the allocated elective courses. I can see for public sector management, I can see only two electives allocated. Does it mean we can pick only one or we can do the two? Because the timetable shows that the two elective courses runs at the same time. So that means you cannot do two. You can do only one, okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, now, Lisa, I think you've already asked. I think we are done here. Um, let me see. Laura Ankuma. Lori Ankuma, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, please, okay. I've still not received my provisional admission letter, admission letter. So I don't know what I called today and I've still, no, I've still not received it yet. But you've made your payment. No, I haven't. And the provisional one to yes, go and make it. I don't even have the provisional, yes. Which program? Um, clinical um, leadership and management. Hi, my own department. <laughs> Laurie, you know what? Laurie, do you have my number? No, please. That is, Okra, then you won't even get that. Can you imagine? You don't even have my number. My number is online. <laughs> My number okay. is online, so please get in touch after this, and then let, let me find out from the admin uh, what probably went wrong with your application. Okay. Okay, Doc. Okay. I will check on this, but get in touch with me after here. Yes, please. Thank you very oh. much. You're welcome. Laurie Ankuma, you sent to her. Oh, Laurie, I'm told they've sent your letter. Was it sent today? Because I, I haven't seen anything yet. I called even this morning. I'm told you should check from March. Probably check your spam. 22nd March, I am told. Your name rings quite a bell here. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. 22nd okay. March, check your spam. Check your spam. Yes, please. Yes, please. If possible, fast tomorrow. Put your stomach down and get to the letter. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> but if not, but I still contact me unless if we have to resend it. Okay. Yes, please. Yes, All please. Right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> um, is there anybody I've left out? I think everybody has asked a question. I guess we are done here. Thank you all so much for your audience. I hope everybody's issues have been addressed. Is there any other thing, essay? No, no. So we are done. Yeah. All right. So people will see you on 25th. And uh, when you, you log in, uh, if you are within the clinical leadership program, yes, I will see you. Otherwise, the rest of us will clash somehow. We will meet somehow when you come in person. Have a nice hey, evening. Hey, Bye. Bye.